Hey guys, what's up? Back inside the house, and I have a whole bunch of locking carabiners laid out here. Uh, I ran all over the place and borrowed from friends and stuff and grabbed a bunch of different lockers and um, really dug into all my old gear and stuff, found some other lockers too. And I wanted to talk about locking carabiners. And uh, I know this is kind of a weird topic, but I got this idea from a comment from a viewer who asked about doing like a comparison of every belay device that I've talked about and like that's out there to talk about the ones I like the most for certain situations and the most versatile one, which I definitely do plan on doing, but there's a few belay devices that I don't have and I'm also gonna need to borrow from friends that I would like to review first. And so there's about like five or six of them I still wanna do and um, it's just sort of a budget thing and a budget and time thing. Also on that comment, uh, they were also talking about locking carabiners too. And so I thought, hey, I've used enough lockers and I have enough lockers that I can make a video comparing which ones I like to use in which situations, as well as a few specialty lockers I have. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to clear off the board right here and then talk about each locker individually, what I like and dislike about it. Yeah, and um, where I would use the certain locker. Okay, so I decided to move outside for the rest of this video because it's a pretty nice day, very comfortable. And uh, I really don't know where I'm gonna start with this. I just have so many friggin' lockers. Um, I guess I'm gonna sort of break them up into three different sections. Uh, the D carabiners, the parabiners, which are definitely the meat and potatoes, and then a few specialty uh, lockers that I just so happen to have uh, lying around. And um, yeah, I mean, I uh, tried to keep things simple and I eliminated a number of duplicates like these ones. And then that whole pile over there is just extra lockers, stuff I don't need for it. And uh, let's just get right into the video, starting with D carabiners. Okay, so pretty much this is just an assortment of D lockers I have right here. I don't have as many opinions about these carabiners because they all kind of do the same thing. A uh, couple of examples, uh, these ones are extremely common. These are black diamond uh, D lockers. Hey, okay, here we go. This is basically what a new one looks like uh, on the website or if you pick it up at REI. Uh, it's just your standard D carabiner. It's a bit bigger. BD just came out with even smaller, sort of more paperclip D carabiners. Uh, the main thing that you would use these things for are for uh, more static placements. Some people that like having lockers at every point of their top rope anchor will use these for the bolts because, you know, they're just small, low-profile po carabiners. Uh, other things that people like using them for, um, for hanging their belay plate in guide mode. They'll use this for the eye of the plate and use a parabiner for letting the rope run through. Also, like if you're clipping yourself to the anchor, either with a personal anchor system or with a clove hitch, this isn't bad because the hitch just cinches down on the locker and you can use a nice lightweight carabiner for that. So that's kind of the main uses for it. I, just a couple different designs here. This one I actually got off of a climb, like it was just hanging there so it bailed off with it. So I went ahead and took it. This is a Mammut one. Uh, same exact deal with the locker. Uh, over here we have a camp uh, orbit. Again, this is just your usual twist lock. I really like the camp lockers because they have this really big lock, so with gloves. It's really nice to use these for ice climbing or uh, alpine climbing anytime you have gloves. For uh, rock climbing type stuff, the Metolius one isn't that bad. Just because this one you can see is a bit more compact than all like a number of the other lockers you see is a bit smaller. This is probably about the same size as the new black diamonds that uh, the small lockers that they just came out with. Only I bet you the black diamond ones don't take as much time to lock the, the carabiner down. Metolius are kind of famous for how long it takes to lock their carabiners. This is an interesting one I was using for a little bit. It's made by Trango, a little paperclip guy. This is probably the lightest weight carabiner I have, if you're looking for ultra lightweight ones. It has a very smooth locking action. Yeah, if you want really light ones, then check out these Trango Orange Dudes. I don't know the name of them. I also have a few of these slide lockers by Idlerid. And so, it's just like this little sliding gadget. You open it up, and then it automatically locks. 
this is kind of interesting because there's really not too many auto lockers for this style of carabiner. And so Ilrid kind of has a nice little niche market here. A friend of mine really likes using these for glacier type stuff. And uh, these D carabiners, they're not bad, but I actually have a story with the pair of lockers that I'm going to talk about later on in the video. But if you want an auto locker type um, D carabiner, then this is kind of the one for you. But other than that, that's D carabiners. Pretty much any type of carabiner will do anything you need it for. And uh, people are less opinionated about these things because anything you use a D carabiner for, all of these would work. All right, pair lockers. Uh, so I thought the most uh, appropriate carabiner to start out with would be the most popular design. Um, so pair lockers are also known as HMS carabiners and they just have the two sides flaring out and a really big bar stock. Uh, if you're looking for your first carabiner, you really can't go wrong with this uh, design. Uh, pretty much every company has a version of this on the market. It has a super round uh, stock right here. That's what it's referred to as. Standard locking mechanism. You really can't go wrong with this if you don't care about what lockers you have and you just need something for your top rope anchor or whatever. Uh, these are definitely workhorse lockers. You may have one of the older versions like this. These guys, these are also the old twist lock version. Uh, I actually found this other this locker on a climb. Uh, I used to have more of these, but you know you just sort of lose this stuff over time. But this is like the older version. This is the newer version. They're the exact same, just different colors. Uh, personally, kind of changed them to more boss looking anyway. Uh, they also come in these. Uh, single or sorry double action twist it has one action to unlock it and then one action to open it up and that's where it got the double action and so yeah again i would say that these you just can't go wrong with these types of carabiners if i was setting up a top rope as you heard in my other videos i kind of like to have one as an auto locker and then the other one can be a normal locker so if i was doing a top rope i'd just have these two together opposite and opposed that's kind of just my personal preference but um one thing that I find with myself is I have small little hands and uh, sometimes it can be kind of hard to open these things up and then lock them in specific circumstances. If they're nice and loose like this, I can get away with one hand, but the more you use them, the more gunked up they get and then the harder they are to lock. That is one issue with them is uh, just in my hands, they're just a little bit on the big side. And so a lot of other companies will make slightly smaller pair lockers. These are these can be referred to as compact pair lockers. This is the Black Diamond Vapor Lock. I really love these lockers. The only problem is I've seemed to have lost all of mine. Uh, every now and again after a trip or something, I just sort of get back home and I realize that a couple of these are gone. <laughs> and so uh, this is just like some newer one that I've been sort of saving, uh, haven't been using that much. But another thing that I found with these BD carabiners, and it's a little bit less with these guys because um, because it's just a bit harder to see, uh, the large amount of material around them makes them last longer. I'm gonna use this one to repel a couple times too, but not really that much. But uh, with these vapor locks, these are some of the more lightweight uh, carabiners. You can see instead of that round stock construction, these have I-beam construction. So it just causes them to wear out faster. Here's an example of one that I've had for a bit longer. And you can see how it's pretty well worn out from me repelling on it. Still has life left in it. Like the grooves are there, but they're not big enough for retirement yet. So I can still get a little bit of use out of this locker, but um, I just find that the black diamond carabiners tend to wear out a bit faster for repel beaners than other company. Uh, but that could easily be because of how uh, lightweight these carabiners are and the specific materials they use. But if you want your stuff to last you a while, then uh, the smaller, more lightweight carabiners aren't exactly the best things to go with. You want to go with the fatter, heavier ones. And so these are kind of the two types of lockers I have. Um, all the other lockers I show you are going to be either the big ones or the compact pair but they're both gonna be pair lockers. So here's another uh, carabiner here. Moving on to the, this is another large uh, pair locker. Uh, this is a Mammut. 
Uh, it's made by Mammut. Uh, I call it the Mammut Big Blue One. <laughs> and so this thing, same locking device. You can see I haven't used this one that much, but it has the same problem as these guys where uh, I just have a little bit of trouble, maybe even a bit more, just sticking my whole hand around it. But it is uh, quite useful as a master point locker and as a belay locker, repel locker. You can use this for anything. Um, I just don't like it because, again, I have the small hands and that gives me a bit of trouble. Let me throw in another pair locker, another small compact pair locker. This is the Metolius, uh, Metolius locker. I love how I don't know the names for any of these things. Um, this is actually a really great carabiner, but everyone I've talked to about these hates them. Uh, mainly because of the locking action. Here you go. I'm gonna give you real time of me locking this thing There we go now it's fully locked so you can see <laughs> there's like 15 mega twists in there And that's the big deal with these Metolius lockers if they just change the design so that way you didn't have to twist the locking mechanism a million times. I'm certain that they would really build up their uh, following with this locker. Because other than that, it's really great. It's a round stock locker. And so the rope just feeds super smooth through this whole thing. I've actually started bringing one of these out for my belay device for the, uh, for the auto block uh, capability. So that way the rope... The rope just feeds so smoothly over this big bar stock and it's super round. And uh, because of that, they also make good repelling carabiners. Here's a Metolius locker that I use as a repel beaner for a little bit. Um, not super long, but uh, you can see that it gets grooves just the same. I used this for about a month, maybe a month and a half in Red Rocks uh, as my repel beaner. And it was pretty new at the time. And I already have some grooves I can feel a little bit, but it's really not that much. And that was on in the desert where the sand is everywhere. So you can uh, get a lot of use out of these lockers, especially if you don't climb as much as me. And then I've also found that with the newer ones, the uh, screwing action is a little bit more stiff. Here, let me get a brand, like a basically new one. It hasn't been used that much. And so the locking part, is just a little bit stiffer like you need to just screw it a whole lot or it takes a lot more effort to fully lock it whereas if you grab an old one that um, that's been used a lot more it seems to have a bit more freedom with the lock and you can even get a little momentum with the spin to make it lock faster the the more you use it the easier it'll get to spin these things but you just have to have the patience for it me personally, I've used a lot of these for Grigri lockers because I like the small pair in a Grigri function. Uh, it just has so much freedom to move around with this big bar stock and the small locker is just nice to use for Grigri's. Uh, I also will use D lockers like this on Grigri's as well because it, the rope's not passing through. Any belay device where the rope passes through the carabiner, it's good to go with a pair locker but any device that doesn't have the rope passing through the carabiner, it's not bad to have a small compact D locker. Uh, again, a lot of people don't really like these carabiners because of how long it takes to twist them. But I feel, well, in my personal opinion, that doesn't really matter as much as what I get out of the locker. Now that does mean that I wouldn't use these on alpine climbing with gloves, uh, not ice climbing as much either, uh, but Every, play, every piece of gear has its use, so for rock climbing related stuff, it's not too bad. All right, here we go. I actually forgot. Um, I got this locker too. This is somewhere about the size of a compact pair. It's maybe a bit bigger than the uh, compact care uh, pair, but it's actually a bit more durable than this guy. Not as much as this one. It's the exact middle ground between the two, uh, but this is also made by Black Diamond. And you can see how I haven't really used this that much. Has very slight repel grooves. Me, I used it to repel like once. But uh, this is not a bad carabiner to have. And it's more compact, so it's really easy to open. About as easy as these guys, pretty much. So if you want a middle ground carabiner between this one and this one, 
then go with the black diamond orange gate. Here we go, I'm getting into some fan favorites now. Um, this is the Camp Nitro carabiner. Uh, this has become my favorite carabiner. I use these for rock climbing, alpine climbing, ice climbing, just about anything. Has a really big collet, so that way you can lock it with gloves on. Gloves on. Um, and also you don't really need to spin it that much. When you get these new, they just glide up and lock, but that never lasts that long, so. Uh, but really not that much turning action. As well as a key lock nose, which most of these carabiners have. Uh, the key lock nose, but that's nice just to pull them on and off of slings and whatnot without getting them hooked. The only problem is with how big this barrel is right here to get into the screwing part, uh, a lot of dirt and grime will get stuck in these and they also will freeze up every now and again. When I was in Ure uh, earlier this year, I did have a little bit of freeze up problems with these guys and I just had to really uh, you know, torque them with my hand to get them to unlock. But that's kind of more of a rare thing. Uh, other than that, I still really like using these guys in any environment, and they're definitely my main locker set that I go to. Other fan favorites among many people, the Petzl Attaché Carabiner. You can see it's another more compact, uh, small locker. Uh, this one has the red dead feature, and then the gray not dead feature, if uh, folks like that. I've also seen other people make their own, so you can just paint it on. Uh, but this one, you can see how, unlike the Camp Nitro, this collet is really closed off, so not as much crap will get in there, and uh, it'll affect the carabiner a little bit less. People go out of their way to look for is the old Petzl Attaché, which had a complete brown stock. It was like a Metolius, only it didn't have the annoying screw thing, pretty much. And so, I, like, I even have friends who will buy those attachés, those old-style attachés, off of people that they see in the gym just because they're so good and old. Or, and then they're just not made anymore. These new attachés have replaced them. So, it's kind of like I don't really care about using the new versus the old, but uh, these are definitely some fan favorites. Going along the same line as the attaché, I have the, or the Mammut version of the attaché pretty much. Uh, they actually have their own specific name for this, the Mammut Orange Carabiner. Uh, it's basically built the same as the Attaché, maybe it has a little bit more metal in there. Uh, same twist locking function, but uh, yeah, it's just Mammut's version of it. And uh, because of that, it's a really great carabiner. All the same features, and it works very well. Okay, so just as promised, I um, talked about this D locker idlerid um, from before one thing is after they get old they do start to stick open like that so you have to be careful of that this one doesn't but the pair of lockers will I'll grab this one yeah so you just gotta make sure that they're actually locked uh, one thing is I used to really love these carabiners and I used them a lot I had a set of them of five that I would use as my main lockers because I really liked how fast and easy they were and that they were always locked. But one day, I actually had this little locking mechanism shoot straight up and out of my locker. And so that made, well, that didn't make it a locker anymore. It was just a really heavy non-locker. And so I thought that was kind of a weird incident, but uh, it was not a freak occurrence because the a couple days later, this one did the exact same thing where the locking mechanism just shot right out of the carabiner. So it's no longer really, it doesn't function as a locking carabiner anymore. So yeah, I stopped using these things after that. And uh, pretty much all my carabiners would have kept on going until they broke right there in that locking thing. And no, I have not had that happen on D lockers. I have, I think, two of these and they're both working just fine, but the pair lockers tend to break faster. Go ahead and get them if you like them, but just be aware that they could pop out on you. I did have to use them for a while, a little over a year before they started breaking, but that is a bit of a problem. Now, if you want a more bomb-proof Italid locker, this right here is a triple action locking carabiner where I have to push this thing up, turn it to the side, and then it opens up. One thing I found that was really impressive about these specific lockers is that they're a lot lighter than you would 
expect from a triple action locker of this style. Another thing I gotta give Idle Rig credit for is the fact that their carabiners last, uh, or um, they take a while to wear down. I used this as a repel beaner for a little bit, and I remember putting a lot of repels on it, but I barely dented it at all. So um, even with how light this carabiner is, it still lasts quite a while. So nice job, Idle Rig. So what we got here is a piece of steel in the wear spot where the rope runs through so that way when you're repelling it'll last so much longer than an aluminum carabiner the rest of the carabiner is aluminum so it's still pretty lightweight but it just has that steel insert i used this for the same amount of repelling i did on that metolius locker um, for season red rocks and obviously because of the steel this one shows barely any marks except for the aluminum rub up top which kind of doesn't matter that much so yeah, if you're doing any a lot of repelling or climbing in deserts, this is kind of a great carabiner to have. I only have one because I only really use it for as a repel carabiner, but it makes uh, it's also really wide, so it's useful for like a master point locker. Uh, it's not so wide that I have trouble opening it with my hands. I can open this up really well. Just overall, a really great carabiner. Also, if you want carabiners that are going to last forever, just buy yourself a set of these. If you have five of these, you can climb anything, and they'll last for years. Alright, BD Magnetrons. I really love these carabiners, um, mainly because they're a triple action locker that is automatic and it's super fast to work with. Um, again, going on to like using it with gloves. Uh, people will bring these out for ice climbing and alpine climbing where they have gloves on and use them just fine. My problem is again with my hands, I have small thumbs compared to the rest of my hand. And so usually material bunches up on that thumb and it can make it annoying to open up these magnetrons. So I won't really use these if I have gloves for any reason with the exception of this guy. But um, I won't bring out the rest of these ice climbing or alpine climbing with gloves. I'll just roll with my camp nitros. But uh, for rock stuff, these things are great. And I really like using them. Uh, they have the problem of wearing out just as fast as other BD lockers. So you gotta watch out for that. Uh, me personally, I try not to repel on these. Like after I put the marks in this, I realized how fast they wear out. So I try not to repel on these. I use cheaper lockers. Cause these things are like 24 bucks a piece or whatever. And so I can save these for other things that I use them for. One thing I really like traveling with in a rock climbing context is a big uh, triple action locker carabiner. And my personal one of choice is this Magnetron. Uh, the only problem is, again, with like, it's the same size as these guys. And so, again, with like, it's sort of hard to open these up with my small hands. It, I struggle a bit getting my thumb to actually be able to open this up and sometimes that causes a little bit of a struggle fest to just open this thing up but i'm not really using this too often my main thing that i use this for while rock climbing is a master point locker which i tend to use that a bit more than other people i think but it's just uh it also comes in for other things too it's just nice to have a big triple action with you not bad to have a smaller triple action locker with you too uh, these guys are the same size as the vapor lock so they fit my hands perfectly and uh, I know a lot of people really like using these. Yeah, they just come in handy for different things. I always bring like probably these four out while big wall climbing because I can use one to hold the portal edge, one to fix the line, and uh, one to hold the uh, haul bag on the swivel. So it's kind of nice to have those triple action lockers. As far as this one goes, this one has a very specific purpose. Um, these carabiners are designed for belay beaners. So you have your belay loop right here. And then you have your device right here and the carabiner doesn't go cross-loaded. However, having this magnetron with a carabiner that can't go cross-loaded is the new thing in the industry standard for um, hooking yourself into a rope in glacier travel mode. So I use this for that glacier travel uh, when I'm guiding on glaciers and whatnot. Uh, that's when this guy comes out. They do make cheaper version which is, this is the same design, you know, same idea, but it's just a locker, which is a great tool to use as a belay carabiner. And people really like right, using these. I just don't like them because you usually have to clip it twice in order to get it oriented right. And when you hang it 
quickly on your harness, it just gets in the way. So it's not really my thing, but uh, plenty of people really like using these. All right, so this is the last locker I wanted to talk about. This is an extremely special use. It's a double action locker. You twist it to the side and open it up, but it has this extra feature right here, which allows you to redirect the brake strand. This is a Petzl Farino carabiner, and uh, that's mainly what it's used for is uh, for blowing with the grigri, and then you use this to redirect the brake strand to add more friction, either when you're lowering someone in usual top rope or lowering someone from above with a grigri. And I have some B roll right that rolling right here where you can see that in action. Uh, just a very special T piece to use, unless you do that a lot where you're lowering people in, like if you're commonly climbing a Joshua tree and stuff like that. This isn't exactly worth having in your quiver. I pull this out when I do single pitch guiding. Okay, so bottom line, which lockers do I usually tend to roll with? Now that I've talked about all the different lockers I have here, I sort of separate out the ones that I like to use. And as you can imagine, they're all the other lockers that you see in the rest of my videos, because those are the ones I like using. Uh, my standard sets I roll with are five of the blue nitros or five of these uh, well, actually four of these Mammut orange ones and then one attache because I didn't want to buy a fifth Mammut and this one's the same exact size, so it's like I have the orange set and the blue set. So maybe I have these Camp Nitros on my Alpine harness and that's set up for a few days of Alpine work. And then I also have to do some rock work right after. Instead of transferring all these carabiners and a bunch of other stuff, I can pack a separate backpack with a set of these orange carabiners too. Uh, sometimes I'll add in and this big triple action, especially if I'm doing rock stuff or rock guiding. If I'm rock guiding with one client, this is usually the amount that I have. Uh, sometimes I may even bring another <laughs> locker like that um, for my belay device to roll through. Uh, sometimes I won't. If I have, so wait, what does that make? Six lockers? And that's a common guiding setup. If I'm just going with myself and a friend, maybe I'll only have five, but that's really as many as I go down to is five. Now if I have a second client, so it's me and two other people, I will usually add in another locker because they just come in handy. Um, it's kind of funny how I've slowly been adding more lockers to my setup, especially when it comes to guiding with two people. Uh, another thing is if I'm on an alpine climb, generally it's just the five lockers either those five or this five, and I don't bring as many auto lockers. I will, um, on like a glacier climb, I'll usually only bring three of these pair lockers, and then also have this one on my harness for, you know, clipping into the rope. Other times I'll also add in this locker when I'm rock guiding, or like uh, rock climbing in Red Rocks or some place that's really hard on gear, so that way when I repel it doesn't uh, wear out my other lockers as fast. A lot of people like to carry around a D carabiner or two. If they carry around two, it's usually one for the third hand, one for the uh, belay plate hanging from the anchor. Uh, I personally have moved away from using as many D carabiners. I used to have, I used to carry two with me along with other pairs, but I've sort of switched to only pair lockers now. And I don't think I even bring out a single D carabiner with me is kind of interesting but it's it's an experiment right now maybe i'll go back to using the d carabiner in the future uh if i'm doing more rock stuff uh maybe i'll substitute a few of these lockers out and put in one two maybe three magnetrons other times i'll also use one of these for the clipping the device on the anchor and then one of these for the rope going through it just depends on what i do other than that, that's pretty much it. My locker systems don't really change much beyond that, excepting with um, adding in this if I'm going to be using the Grigri and lowering from above with it a whole lot. A lot of times when I bring my Grigri along, I'll have a separate locker attached to it beyond this, uh, beyond the usual five. And sometimes, a lot of times I go with a Metolius locker on my uh, Grigri, but also I've been using Magnetrons on the Grigri as well and then having maybe my five nitros or my five orange carabiners with this for my Grigri. All right, so there you have it, guys. That's kind of just talking about the different lockers that I use and trying to get as many lockers together to compare 
with each other throughout this entire video. If you have any lockers that I left out, then you can always leave a comment about it. Um, I have been seeing some newer lockers on the market that are kind of like maybe a blend of these, best of both worlds, like uh, I-Beam, or sorry, uh, one of these round stock combined with the easy locking of some other carabiners. Uh, and if I get my hands on those and really like them, then I'll sort of do a different review on that. If you want me to talk more in depth about any one of these carabiners, why I would use it for this or that, or how versatile it really is, then you can leave a comment. If you have any other video suggestions or what you want me to talk about, then you can leave a comment about that. And then I'll see you guys in the next video.